So a block of mass M is attached to the end of a spring. Spring stiffness constant K. The mass is given an initial displacement x naught from equilibrium and initial speed v naught. So hold on a second. Let's label some things in that we might be that we might find helpful. For instance, this could be the position where x equals zero. The location where the spring would lie if it wasn't outstretched. Now compare that to this location. x equals x naught. Certainly an outstretch. Okay? As a result of this outstretching, the spring is now holding potential energy. And they also told me we have initial speed v0. Usually in these kinds of problems, we just kind of let the thing go and let it oscillate back and forth. And that's very predictable. But this time, we're going to give it a little push, giving an initial speed of v0. Now, ignoring friction and the mass of the spring, use energy methods to find its maximum speed and its maximum stretch from equilibrium in terms of the given quantities. Now, remember what I just said. In this location, the supposed place where the spring would not be outstretched, where it would lie naturally, the spring has no need to store potential energy. Right now, the moment I give this thing a push, and the moment it's also being outstretched, the system is holding two kinds of energy, and it's got to share it. The sharing the total energy between kinetic and spring potential. You get to this location and all of the energy must be kinetic because there's no need to store potential here. So let's establish an initial position and a final position and say knowing that energy will be conserved because we get to ignore friction that EI equals E F. As I said, in the initial position, you have spring potential and kinetic energy. So SPI plus KEI. In the final position, it's all kinetic. So we say KEF. Now let's get specific. We know that the definitions for spring potential are one half K x squared, where k is the spring constant and x is the stretch or compression from equilibrium, and kinetic energy is one half, very similar, one half mv squared, where m is your mass and v is your velocity at any point. So in our situation, for the initial spring potential energy, we may say, along with the putting in the variables that we know, one half k, because we were given stiffness constant k, and x naught squared. That is specifically the location we were told to use. For KEI, we may say 1 half m, we were told the block is of mass m, and v naught squared, for v squared, if we want to be really specific. That must be equal to another definition of kinetic energy, 1 half m v squared, where this uh, indistinct v is going to represent the velocity I'm interested in, my v max. Okay, so the velocity at location x equals zero, the one I'm looking for. All that's left to do is to isolate that v. We can cross out all of our one halves because they are shared among all the among all the terms and on both sides, and we have k x naught squared plus m v naught squared is equal to m v. We may divide both sides by m. Dividing each part of the left individually by m, we find k x naught squared over m plus just v naught squared because those m's would cancel. That would be equal to v squared where then taking the square root of both sides would reveal our answer. k x naught squared over m plus v naught squared underneath a radical. That's an expression for the maximum velocity and the conclusion of this problem. Also while we're here, we can calculate the maximum stretch from equilibrium in terms of the given quantities. Now had I not pushed this, I would say the maximum stretch from equilibrium is just x naught, or even 
negative x naught if you want okay the same distance but on the other side but no I expect us to go a little bit further than that and that's because I gave this thing a push this could be the location that we're looking for let's set up a very similar situation EI is again equal to EF as before we expect our spring and kinetic to start here, so we're going to use the same variables. We have 1 half k x naught squared plus 1 half m v naught squared. No changes there. But this time in the final position, and I'll relabel this so now that's the final, we come to a rest. We run out of kinetic energy at all, as all of it converts to potential. This is the maximum displacement, the place where we momentarily come to rest. And we say here that the final energy is all spring potential. And we use that definition and say it's one half k nondescript x squared, and that x is the thing I'm looking for. The algebra is almost exactly the same. Cancel out all the one halves and divide by k. This time, you get x naught squared, because you cancel out the k on that term, plus m v naught squared over k is equal to x squared. And now, taking the square root of both sides, you find that the maximum displacement is x naught squared plus m v naught squared over k.